Welcome to the lawyerfair.co.uk daily podcast. Lawyerfair helps businesses find the right lawyer at the fairest price. But on this podcast, we just chew the fat with some great guests. Uh, uh, daily business podcast. We have reached the mighty achievement of podcast number 99, an achievement that is worthy of a top, a top guest. And that's what we have. Alice Waitman, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Alice, uh, you are, now I'm, I hope I've got all this right, the founder of the Work Crowd, the founder and MD of Hanson Search. And if anybody looks at Alice's um, distinctive uh, CV, a lot of other stuff going on there as well. But we're, we're coming together this morning to talk about hiring and recruitment because we've had a long chat before we recorded. Uh, about about this issue, and certainly, Alice, from from my experience of, of running a startup and getting involved in kind of fast growth companies, it is almost the number one issue that everybody talks about at various networking events and seminars. Is is the challenge of recruiting good people? Absolutely, you know, um, I think that the challenge of, of hiring great talent is on top of everyone's list at the moment, uh, and everywhere I seem to be going, every conference and um, networking event, I think the issue around where all the t- where's all the talent gone, and actually how to be attract and retain talent seems to be key. Well, it is actually. You gave me an acronym this morning on an email that I'd never heard of before, but it was it was Gaffer, uh, Gaffer sweeping up the talent. Just 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 explain what Gaffer is. Yeah, so so Gaffers are the uh, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and Apple businesses, um, mm-hmm. and they're having a. Uh, a big impact, I think, on, on probably smaller SMEs and also agencies and different businesses out there who have developed, trained great talent, and then the gaffers are coming along and swooping them all up. So I've definitely seen that from a um, from the marketing and PR perspective. I, I headhunt in that space, mm. and um, I've very much seen the gaffer businesses swooping in and, and taking some of the top talent. Well, that, well, that's interesting. I mean, it's not an acronym I knew, but it's certainly a challenge we're facing. I mean, there are two, there are two key areas, I think, here in terms of the current recruitment landscape. You've got um, the explosion of startup scaling businesses with, with urgent and desperate need for talent and not always the cash to pay for it, uh, which we'll cover in a second. And then the kind of challenges of a growing economy where there's, you know, the lack of hiring um, and, and development has reduced supply uh, with the demand going up. So, I mean, I think that's, those are the two key areas, aren't they, in terms of mm. the market? Yeah, absolutely. So, the, so the dilemma the dilemma is then. So let's let's talk about the fast growth company as a, as an example. The dilemma is uh, the need to recruit, waiting for the right person, which never comes. I mean, how do you get around that? How do you attract people? Yeah, I mean, I think the issue is that um, you know we're all we're all kind of conscious of our uh, of costs. I think we're all conscious of do we actually what's the demand that we need today and. A lot of businesses have changed the way that they actually hire from how they used to hire in 2000, well, pre-recession. So now people are almost hiring behind the curve rather than ahead of the curve. And I think that holds a big issue because they're hiring in almost a stress state where they're actually sort of panic mode of, of needing to hire and then perhaps not always getting the best hire in place. But the, the challenge I think we're facing is because there's a lack of talent in the market um, 2009 had a huge impact in terms of hiring, development, training of staff. So we're actually having the consequences of, of the aftermath of that. Now we've got a growing economy, we've got a rise of startups, we've got a rise of scale-ups, we've got the unicorns, the gaffers, and they're all out there wanting the best talent. But that actually that talent doesn't exist how it used to exist um, pre-recession. So I think businesses need to start thinking in a, in a, a broader way of how they can attract talent. They need to think also about the talent that they're looking to hire and maybe be a little bit more creative. Um, you know, I've seen a huge rise in the freelance market. A lot of great people couldn't find jobs um, during recession and had to sort of restructure the way that they were working. So if businesses can actually look at different ways to hire, they might actually be able to um, hoover in some of these great people. I was speaking to an MD of an advertising agency and he sort of said, you know, for the days of these mad men style structures, we need to actually offer a lot more flexibility. We need to sort of think about why people come to work. People actually want a, a better work-life balance. Um, people want to feel that there's a sense of purpose. They have a mission in terms of what they're doing. So they need to be better at selling a story rather than sort of, um, thinking that they need to enforce their working methods upon the new style of workers. Mm. So um, I think for a startup, that's something that to really think about, what is their offering and how to attract people? So, you know, it's 
it's a competitive market. What do people want to hear? Well, people are attracted to the leaders, so they want to be inspired. They want to work with like-minded, inspirational, sensible-headed individuals. Uh, we had, you know, a previous client who was quite a hothead, and actually, who wants to go and work with someone where the boundaries are always changing? People want to know they're working with an individual who's going to respect them, train them, develop them, but then also be able to offer them a good incentive to be able to go and work there. It's not always about money, but money is obviously important to pay the bills. Mm. Um, so it's getting the right balance. And the um, the gaffer businesses are, are very good at doing both. And I think that is the challenge that a small start to have to face. Mm. Um, how can they alleviate the risk of working for a startup versus um, uh, the actual benefits? And I think selling benefits and opportunity would be the key ways to go. So working in a startup environment, you can often get involved in such, such you know, many more um, areas of the business. You can take greater responsibility. And there's a real sense of achievement if you've managed to grow and develop something. And I think they're the key selling points that really um, CEOs and business leaders need to sort of think about and will put them in a better position to, um, to the bigger businesses. But fundamentally, if someone wants to work for a big corporate or a gaffer, then they're not right for a startup. And I think that's a really important um, uh, element that, that business owners need to think about because you don't want to sort of squeeze the wrong culture and the wrong type of person into your business just because they've got the right skill set. I'm fundamentally all about getting the right attitude and the right culture before skills. You can train on skill but you can't train on culture and values. So get that right and then invest up on the training and development. Well, Alice, you pinched almost all the lines I was going to mention to, mention to you. Alice. You've, <laughs> stolen, you've stolen my recruitment thunder, but then you are an expert in these things. Because uh, I was going to say, that, you know, from my perspective, it's almost always about the person. It's very, very rarely about the, the, the CV or even their, their core skill set. Um, yeah. if, if that person isn't a fit with with me or with the team or with the culture, um, then then it's not it's not going to work. And I think I think uh, you know, hiring on values and culture is is absolutely crucial, particularly as you're building a business. Because if you've if you have created a certain culture and you start to recruit the wrong kind of people, then that that, that permeates down through through the rest of the team. Absolutely, you know, I, I love the sort of the quote by Steve Jobs, and he, he very much was. He interviewed all his first, I think it was his first 100 people into the business, and he yes. always went to the 10s, because 10s would then recruit like-minded individuals and other 10s. And if you start, start sort of lowering you know, your values, lowering the culture, lowering your expectations, that is only going to filter through, and the ripple effect is going to sort of, you know, increase. So really, the first key people into your business should be absolutely crucial in getting that right. Yeah, no, no, I completely agree. Completely agree there. And certainly, at lawyer fair, we're going through that process at the moment, where you know mm. we, we desperately need people, but it's, it's if it isn't the right fit, it isn't it isn't the right person. Just yeah. uh, have you seen particularly innovative ways to recruit and hire, uh, Alice? Have you seen things that have made you think, wow, that that's a, a very unique approach? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's different ways that now that you can go about it. I have a, a client actually on the work crowd who has a virtual model and um, she is a great believer in, you know, work is what you do and not where you do it. And as a result, she's able to attract some really great people who physically just can't make it into an office, whether that's because of family or um they, you know, they live far away, whatever the circumstances might be, but they can do great work. So people are actually looking at restructuring how they're um, uh, paying and rewarding people, you know, pay on outcomes rather than time it takes. Mm -hmm. So what's that project worth um, and pay on that? If it takes someone a day to do it or two days, it doesn't matter. You're getting the results at the end of the day when you want it and the right quality that you want, and that's what you're paying for. So I think, you know, looking at it's not all about always hiring the right permanent people. It's about hiring your core permanent people, but maybe having some sort of flexibility around the outside of that. I think the cost of making a bad hire is far more detrimental than actually having someone who can come on on a flexible freelance basis where you're testing that person. And actually, if they love what you do, and they're right, you may be able to convert them at a later stage into a permanent, or you might think, well, actually, this is a great relationship. I don't have to sort of 
manage them from a HR point of view because they're old enough and wise enough and, and uh, you know, self-motivated enough to manage themselves. Um, so there's a real upside in, in looking at how you perhaps can structure your, your working employment environment. Well, listen, I'm a, I'm a huge subscriber to that. And I know that's what the work crowd does. We'll, we'll have a look at that in a moment. But the, mm. the, we're building Lawyer Fair. We've got a very small core team, but we use a bunch of freelancers. And, and some, don't, some don't work. They're, sometimes it's managing freelancers is a challenge in itself. Um, yeah. But once you understand how it works, I mean, the, the, the value and the quality of people out there who, who just don't want to live the, the, the work, the nine-to-five lifestyle. I mean, our, uh, Rachel, who does a lot of our content, is, is, is living this kind of bucolic existence in rural France for former corporate lawyer just decided that wasn't her world and she's just brilliant she's fantastic for us yeah. she's got the skill set she just decided to live in a slightly different way um, uh, and the flexibility and the quality it gives us is, is, is huge and I think the, the other quick thing I would say about, about the impact of a bad hire or, or if you realise it's a bad hire you've got to act quickly um, you've got to, you know, there's no kind of subtlety about it, particularly if you're a growing and early stage business. Um, you've just got to move very swiftly in, in realizing that it's wrong and, and acting upon that. Yes, and I, th- I think a lot of businesses don't do that, and that's because you know we are human, and it's it's a tough process to go through. Indeed. And no one no one likes to do it. Um, you know, no one likes to actually have to get rid of someone. But if they're not right, the impact it can have um, on the rest of your team um is 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 huge so i was actually at an event i um, speaking at an event and someone said uh, they believe in um shooting the slowest buffalo because essentially the pack of buffaloes walks to the slowest and actually you know <laughs> i've quoted this and thought it sounds quite harsh but actually in reality you know you want if you want high performance high growth you need to have everyone absolutely on page one person can can have that knock on effect for the rest of the team where people start behaving and acting like that slower sluggish person and and they think that actually as a leader it's accept you know you're accepting it whereas you're not so the faster you can act on it the better but it is tough and not everyone likes doing it no. um but i think having an honest conversation and also setting up from the start what your expectations are and i think a lot of businesses especially entrepreneurs you know we're we want to get things done we're, we're running at 100 miles an hour and often sometimes forget the detail but having that detailed job spec from the start and laying out what are your expectations of this role what are the measurables and really making people accountable for that yeah. will help um, those conversations be a little bit easier when actually someone's not performing no i couldn't agree more the um there's a great book actually uh well certainly a book i've enjoyed reading which is called the hardest thing about hard things uh and it was written by ben horovich uh from from, from silicon valley and it and a key part of it is about acting swiftly and i think an element of of um acknowledging it's a bad hire is often about the pride of uh, the pride of the entrepreneur who's made who's made a mistake yes. and sometimes they can hang on and hang on thinking it's going to turn and it doesn't and you kind of know quite quickly uh an old yeah. uh, an old colleague of mine used to say you don't you don't know until you run them in terms of people actually joining the company and, and working um but listen talking about freelance uh environment talking about the flexibility of freelance uh working with freelancers the, that's really what the work crowd does alice just give us a bit more background to, to what that to, to what to you provide there yeah absolutely so um i come from a headhunting background and have a headhunting business and a lot of my clients said to me alice you know we're, we're losing talent especially losing women who um at a certain age want to go and have a family but they can't maintain um, working whilst also raising a family. And um, I also had a lot of women coming up to me saying, you know, I'm, I'd like to be able to work, but I don't know how to. If we look at the stats, seven out of 10 people who are currently unemployed would work if they could do so more flexibly, which is huge. And so I was very much felt technology could answer that problem. So we're about connecting businesses directly to a talented pool of experts in PR and marketing so that business can, businesses can remain agile can tap into the best talent when they need it for today rather than thinking about for tomorrow. And um, it also enables freelancers to find great project work and we manage and make it all a lot more simple for both the client and for the freelancer. So, you know, a lot of people say, how do we best work with freelancers? And I think um, it's all about setting out expectations. It's all about the way you pay the freelancer having those right conversations, we've implemented a sort of a milestone payment system for our freelancer to encourage best communication, best payment, and we also make sure that the freelancer gets paid. So it's just helping businesses find 
great individuals and remain agile. And I think in high growth um, companies like tech startups, you know, what they actually need today might be they actually need it today, but it might be different next week. So it allows businesses to tap into the right skills and tap out of them as and when is required. So it's really quite cost effective. Well, you've sold me. I may have to give you a call after this podcast <laughs> and have a chat about what, uh, how it might work for us, actually. But listen, Alice, thank you so much. Uh, you've been a great guest. Um, a lot of insight there. So that's Alice Waitman, uh, founder of the Work Crowd, founder of Hanson Search. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so that, everybody, dear listeners, or dear listener, uh, however number uh, it is out there, that is podcast number 99 in the bag. We are in celebratory mood next week because we're going to record the 100th uh, edition of the Lawyer Fair Business Podcast uh, with possibly a bottle of bubbly on the go. And then we're going to make some very exciting changes in 2016. So until next week, have a fine weekend. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the lawyerfair.co.uk daily podcast. If you'd like to listen to more, why not subscribe and download each episode via iTunes or visit us on the lawyerfair.co.uk website.